you can choose a sound that your enemy's dick will play every time it gets hard. What sound will it be? Though it looks like this custom is fading away during the pandemic, but how about we stop glorifying us being model employees by showing up to work even while sick? I was at a retailer for 14 years, and I don't have enough fingers and toes to count how many times I used to see managers and supervisors dragging themselves to work while sick to please their superiors. In January 2020, I ended up getting the flu from a co-worker that decided it would impress the store manager if she still showed up while sick with the flu. That culture went away real quick when we started getting COVID cases in the store I was at, and I too ended up getting a mild case of COVID. I've called out any time in the past when I felt sick, and I will continue to do so as I normally did. The full phrase is the customer is always right in matters of taste. It's meant to mean that if someone wants to buy a product, you sell them it, who are you to judge if they are willing to pay for a tartan painted car? Edit. Many people are pointing out that the original term is in fact the customer is always right. Through further research I've found that there is a movement to recoin the phrase to the above to show what the phrase was meant to mean, as many asshole customers think it's about them demonize zero-hour minimum wage workers to bend over and kiss their feet at their command. Till. This is what we do with animals that pass away on our farm that are not consumable. We place them in our woods with trail cams and watch as we feed an entire ecosystem. A 900-pound boar we had to put down fed whole families of coyotes, skunks, possums, raccoons, wood rats, deer mice, red-tailed hawks, great horned owls, cooper's hawk, kestrels, flying squirrels, turkey vultures, woodpeckers, wood thrushes, blue jays, crows, chipmunks, ground squirrels and deer. The predators fed off the meat and organs, the birds, and rodents fed off the insects feeding off the corpse and the herbivore deer chewed on the bleached bones for calcium. Nothing was wasted nothing was left except for the thick bones in the end that the animals still gnaw on. The area that the boar was laid to rest was also much greener than the surrounding areas as it had been naturally fertilized. I know they have body forests for humans but for research only. OT fired from a bar for doing this, and I'd do it again. You can't talk to me, the gatekeeper of the booze, like that you stupid fucking dog cunt. Edit, just to explain what happened that night. Worked at a bar for six months a couple years ago now. I had quit uni and moved to a ruralish town in northern England for work, from NZ originally was one of three full-time bartenders and was considered one of their better workers, made friends of everyone etc. One night, closing on my own, tipsy couple comes in one hour from closing. I serve them and move on about cleaning the entire bar so the next guy doesn't have to. The couple sat at the bar in a spot we called the no-no spot cause we can't see you behind the taps and therefore won't automatically serve you. We were 10 from full closing then the wife says. Something about expecting auto service, I say yes yeah, sorry, JSYK we close in 10 and you'll have to leave 10 minutes after that. She said something snarky about how we're a speed bar etc. They were drunk. I said sorry but I'll keep cleaning and stop serving if you're gonna be rude. The husband sat there drunk and slumping, slurs out wanker. You toss pot. So all I said was well you ain't getting served then, there's the door, your name's on the knob. I'm a big Anthrax fan, Bello is a great bassist, they requested a manager so I got them one who also asked them to leave as well and wrote a note saying if someone calls I did nothing wrong. GM didn't care, next morning I was gone. My fiancé's family are these people. They've all acted like spoiled pieces of shit multiple times over the years and have absolutely shat on my fiancé every time they do it, 
they stopped doing it to me early on because I refused to take their bullshit. They will all shout and scream at her about how she's got life so easy because she's in a good relationship and has a job but none of them make any effort to change their lives in any positive way. Of course once they're done shitting on her if she doesn't talk to them for a while she's the asshole for ignoring her mother and sisters. My grandma is so mean and controlling and condescending and I cannot stand being around her. She's also very rich and I am not so sometimes she manipulated me with money and stuff. Overall she does and says a lot of really shitty things and for some reason I'm the only one in the family that stands up to her. We all agree she sucks, but nobody says shit about it because she's old and that's just how she is and she does a lot for you therefore, nobody backs me up on it, and in turn it just looks like I'm the miserable asshole. I don't get why not it doesn't have to be this way if we all just put our feet down and not allow her to act like this but apparently nobody else thinks that way but me. When my husband and I got married, some of his family couldn't make it as they lived across the country. That was fine with me, as they'd made a fuss about our no kids rule, and they had five. Post wedding, we relocated and lived only a 10-hour drive from them, so we joined them for Thanksgiving. None of them had sent a gift or a card after the wedding, none of them expressed any positivity about meeting me for the first time, welcoming me to the family, etc. They were all hours late to the hosting grandparents' home, even though they were bringing most of the food. So we ate late, they were all rude to the newest member of the family, the food was disgusting. I still get notes of appreciation from my mill for not adding those selfish and rude family members Facebook. Good riddance. My grandmother lived a couple of blocks away from us growing up, and we, my two older sisters and I, tried to have a relationship with her, but it never happened. Fast forward to now when the grandchildren she had a relationship with have all moved far away, and she's calling up my sisters and I asking us to come visit. Like, nah lady, you had 28 years to form a relationship with me, and you didn't even put in the bare minimum effort, you're only trying now cause the grandkids you like are too far away and you're lonely. I don't care. Also, you were abusive as fuck to my mom, and just cause she forgave you, doesn't mean I do. I think being family deserves a baseline raise in loyalty, but it doesn't excuse abuse. My tolerance for my brother saying shitty stuff, for example, is much higher because I still love him as my brother. My wife's mother and uncles are the opposite as they haven't spoken to each other in decades due to getting into individual spats with each other and cutting them out of each other's life. She's also been divorced five times, so it tells me that she drops people as soon as it gets bumpy rather than working things out. She is the single most lonely person that I have ever personally met, and she did it entirely to herself. Yep. My older brother is a shite person and I kinda had to deal with it when I was young. I remember the day I stopped talking to him. I was over my brother's house for a barbecue and a friend of my son that I brought along, super sweet and good kid, makes an incent mistake, immediately apologizes and my brother starts to curse him out, motherfucker, this and that. The kid is like 12 or so. I told my brother to chill out, he's just a kid. After I left I realized that's kinda how he was to my young kids all the time. Just a dick for no reason at all. Like having a box full of balloons for a party and yelling at them for playing with them, making any kind of noise, my kids were like 10 and 12 yo boys, and other shit. Right then I decided that although I had to deal with it as a kid, I do not have to subject my kids to it anymore. Nor myself for that matter. He's always been a fucker and probably always will be. This was 10 years ago, never spoke to him since and have no want to either. 
I plan on keeping it that way till I die. Fuck em. This right here is a good one. My husband and I moved near his side of the family about three years ago because of a job connection, our families live in different states, and it was a struggle. Of course we collectively made stupid choices that lead up to that point, but his family's help left us with a shot taste in our mouth. They'll talk about how important it is to respect one another, to take pride in being a family, myself included, I am one of them and have never had any issues with them accepting me, so there's that, and they did follow through with their promises, but they did it through bated breath and through their teeth. It's as if they only did it out of pure obligation. So even though we were always grateful for the help they gave us, we ended up feeling like shit over it and couldn't really pinpoint as to why. It's because it felt like we were making a deal rather than accepting the help. My husband is used to it and genuinely feels uncomfortable accepting help without a caveat, and I learned that behavior. But it truly sucks wanting to feel grateful, but unable to because they were being massive douches about the help in the first place. Then we moved to where my side of the family is, and it's like night and day. My family does do things out of obligation to a certain extent, but they have their limits and are honest about it. When they offer help, they're doing it out of genuine concern and love for us, and are more than happy just having us around. Now because of his family's ideals, I've come to a happy medium of they help us, I help them, but not out of obligation, but of the same love they give us. I want to help, rather than feel obligated to or to return a favor. My husband was especially affected far more than he expected, and is the happiest he's been in years. What I'm trying to say, is that despite his loving both of our families, the obligation aspect is truly a double-edged sword, and can be a burden in many cases. There's a difference between being cordial and having mutual respect for the sake of getting along, versus forcing interactions and obligations that'll often leave both parties feeling miserable. My aunt is a lovely woman to me. She's kind and caring and has always been the sweetest person to me and to other family members. But to other people, like strangers in the street, she's absolutely horrid. A proper Karen. She talks down to people she thinks are lower than her, she's extremely racist, an anti-vaxxer and constantly confrontational. If she was a stranger and I met her in the street, I'd think she's a total bitch. I love her but I'm struggling to find reasons to keep her in my life because I don't think she's an overall good person. Part of me feels guilty for wanting to distance myself from someone who has been nothing but sweet to me. My maternal grandmother lived with me and my immediate family for almost three years. I avoided her as much as possible because she was so toxic. I wasn't devastated when she died horribly of lung cancer because she treated everyone like shit aside from my aunt and cousins, who are hella trashy. She also brought the cancer on herself by smoking two packs of cigs a day. I didn't cry once when the woman died. I was actually relieved because my mother spent literally all of her time caring for my grandmother because my grandmother forbade anyone else from helping. I totally agree. I've always disliked my mom's cousin and she never liked her either because she is a narcissist and only ever reaches out when she needs us for example to babysit her son, but always finds excuses when we need something. My mom finally broke off contact with her when she started throwing herself at my mom's ex, my dad, when I was around and also demanded for him to pay for her hotel room so she can stay with my dad and I during our holiday. She's now saying that she should have stopped spending time with her sooner because she only did so because she was family. Straight up. I worked day shift at a bar and we had a stool at one end that we could sit on if needed. Most of the time I didn't use it, 
but we didn't have floor mats behind the bar so some days my back would really ache and I'd take a few minutes to rest in between customers. Well, one day I came in and the stool was gone. I was confused, but I didn't think much of it until one of our old, shitty, lazy, couldn't stand for three solid minutes if he tried regulars bragged to me about how the owner had removed the stool at his request, because he didn't like seeing us sit down behind the bar. I had to point out to him that most bartenders get floor mats, and the fact that we didn't plus we worked 10 hour shifts with no breaks meant we deserved the right to sit when we got a second. He had nothing to say to that, though it was obvious that he'd clearly never given it any thought before that moment. VE taken roller skating lessons with a class of 5 year olds and I don't have kids. All the parents thought it was strange, but I felt it was the best way to learn rather than risking falling on the kids at the rink. Plus, since the kids were ahead of me on skills, the teacher had them show what they knew by having them teach me. The kids loved it. Many of the parents were bothered by me joining the class, when it was specifically an all-ages class. I just didn't realize that I would be the only person not that young. I found out most of the parents couldn't skate themselves. Seems to me it would have been good for them to be out there learning as well rather than just watching. Or, if they wanted their own class, enough adults could have requested a separate class. I hope all the kids kept skating. Going off that, I hate the idea that doing a hobby as an adult requires you to either teach, go pro, or go big on some competition circuit. A person can be committed to a hobby just because they enjoy it, not because they're trying to make money or become a world champion. I'm a swing dancer, and people think they're being nice when they say things like wow, you must be a professional. Or do you teach? I bet you teach, you've done it for so long. And it's like. I appreciate the intention, but why? I DJ for $25 to $50 a gig, it's barely even a side gig, but I have no interest in teaching, I don't compete well, sometimes I perform but I'm really just doing this for fun, why is that so hard for people to understand? I hate that too. Also just because you're good at something doesn't mean you're a talented teacher. Also the reason I do my hobbies is for fun so I can escape for work. The idea of turning that into more work isn't appealing at all. Also most things that are hobbies are hobbies for a reason for example, I knit, and people tell me I should sell the stuff I make. Sorry, most people want to pay $20 for a knit hat and it would take me so much time that I'd have to charge $200 as a minimum for the time, energy, and supplies it cost me. And that implies that I'd have a customer for it in the first place. In no way will it ever be a money-producing venture. Just let me enjoy my silly projects at home thanks. I think you'd benefit from one of my favorite C.S. Lewis quotes. Critics who treat adult as a term of approval, instead of as a merely descriptive term, cannot be adult themselves. To be concerned about being grown up, to admire the grown up because it is grown up, to blush at the suspicion of being childish, these things are the marks of childhood and adolescence. And in childhood and adolescence they are, in moderation, healthy symptoms. Young things ought to want to grow. But to carry on into middle life or even into early manhood this concern about being adult is a mark of really arrested development. When I was 10, I read fairy tales in secret and would have been ashamed if I had been found doing so. Now that I am 50 I read them openly. When I became a man I put away childish things, including the fear of childishness and the desire to be very grown up. Embrace the things that make you happy and cast off your worries about what others might think. <laughs>